Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Romanticy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Only it's not really, it's a glass of water. I'll explain. But the water is good. Today is Monday, March 25th, uh, 3 25 24. And I'm recording a bit later this morning because I went out and had breakfast with the delightful Megan Mulray, uh, which point I drank two lattes already. So I don't need more coffee, but it was, um, it was good. And it was a great conversation. Uh, a first, I think, I don't think we've ever met for a breakfast before. And I was somewhat shocked when Megan suggested it. But we hadn't been able to connect over the weekend. And so, yeah, it was great. It was delightful. Hi, Megan. So um, I have a long delayed topic to discuss with you all today. It's been moving down my to-do list since before the uh, unexpected and tragic death of my stepfather, which caused all sorts of uh, inconvenience to various plans. Uh, if you all don't know this about me, I have a dark sense of humor. Um, apparently, it's I've been having to explain this to people lately, that I, um, yeah, sense of humor, dark, it's, it's a coping skill. So, so anyway, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, and I'm hoping I haven't lost the the impetus. I think I can get back into this. But I've talked about this somewhat on threads and um, various places. And I know that it's a topic that I come back to frequently here on the podcast. But it's the whole idea of like coaches, um, getting professional advice from various types. And um, it's a problem. I think it's a real problem. The thing is, is as creators, writers are the source. We're, we make something out of nothing. Um, so it's a different kind of profession, right? You know, we don't really work for somebody else. We don't go to an office where we do a job that somebody else describes for us. Um, we're not even like a producer of widgets, right? Because we're not um, taking materials, resources, and converting it into something else. We are creating something from nothing, right? It comes in and we make stories from it. Um, and I'm leaving out the people who are like using AI <laughs> where they basically take other people's stories and crunch it. That's sort of like the factory version, right? Crunch up all the words and make it into a new story. Uh, we just won't go there right now, except that I <laughs> actually, we are going there, aren't we? Um, there are people absolutely doing this. Uh, that they're especially in historical romance, apparently. I met with a friend of mine last week who is telling me about it, that there are absolutely people um, creating historical romances using AI. And, you know, it's going into Kindle Unlimited. And she even had a friend send her one saying that they thought it was good. And she's like, it's word salad. She doesn't even get it. Um, but that's that's where we're at. Anyway, writers, um, other kinds of creators too, but I'm going to stick with writers. We are the source. We create a thing and there is a perception, you know, that we take this thing, it comes from nothing. So essentially we have no expenses, right? We could, we, we can delve into that. Is it really true? You know, that obviously there are you know, I can hear some people out there yelling at me, well, you have to pay for Facebook ads and all this sort of thing. You don't have to. That's all like extra. But essentially to be a writer, all you need is something to write on and something to write with, whether pencil, paper, computer. Um, you don't have to buy paint in order to be a writer, right? You don't have to have a musical instrument. So yeah, you could choose to have a computer. You might need the internet. You know, if you're self-publishing, you know, those are other expenses. But I'm going to argue that that's the publishing side, right? You need resources to be a publisher. To be a writer, all you need is some way to get those words in a place where it can be read, right? 
So, and then you make money from that, you know, magically, magically you convert nothing into money. And there are not that many ways, not many, I don't know, professions, occupations in the world where that is the case, right? And then there is a perception that writers are wealthy, that writers, because we are making money from nothing, spinning gold from straw, right? And that it's a lot of gold because everybody looks at Stephen King and J.K. Rowling and Nora Roberts and so forth. Uh, Stephanie Meyer. So what this does is this attracts the predators and the scavengers. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot. And more all the time. Because these are the people who are also looking to make money from nothing, right? Uh, with as little effort as possible. And they are looking at writers as a nice, juicy source. It's, it's disheartening. The other aspect that makes writers a nice target is there's a level of desperation. And I'm not saying it's you, but it has been me. And there are certainly those out there, you know, the people that are craving success as an author. I saw on Threads. Um, Threads is interesting because it shows me a lot of author and writer discussions. So the algorithm is spot on, but I'm seeing stuff that I don't normally see. Uh, and I saw something from a debut self-published author, and she was asking if anyone could tell her how much she would earn in the first week of publication. And so I'm just gonna pause there. She, she goes on the internet, tells people she's a debut self-published author and wants to know how much money she's going to make in the first week. And if you're on video, this is my face. If you're not, you're just going to have to imagine it. Um, I, I mean, I just want to tear my hair out. I, I remember there's in the early days of Twitter, there was an agent who would always talk about setting her hair on fire. And I feel like, yes, I want to set my hair on fire when I read questions like that. The fact that somebody could even ask that question, ask that question, like as if there's an answer. And it's the, it's not even like the first year. It, the first freaking week she wants to know. And I noticed, I looked at her bio because I'm like, who the hell is this person? And she's like trained in psychiatry. And I, people, I was so close. I, I do try to be a nice person and a supportive person, but I was so close to setting my hair on fire <laughs> on this that I almost replied to her and said about as much money as you made in the first week of psychiatry. Because, I mean, that's roughly equivalent, right? <sighs> It's people think that it's this sign of sure. I, I don't know. I don't even know what she's thinking. She thinks she's thinking she's going to get rich. She wrote this book. It's probably the first thing she's ever written. She's self-publishing it, tra -la, tra la and she thinks that there's going to be a definable amount of money that she will make in the first freaking week. And this is when I get, and I, I kind of want my, my cane to shake at these kids to get off my lawn because... <laughs> What happened to putting in some time and effort? I mean, I, I am almost I'm without words, people. And this isn't even my point. I know I'm being ranty this morning. This isn't even my point. But these are the people who are out there who are asking stupid questions. And I am the, there are no stupid questions person, right? I'm a huge believer in that. Uh, and I, and I hate that I'm being this person. In my Patreon and Discord, I have a channel that is, there are no stupid questions. This was a stupid question. It is so poorly thought out. And 
reveals such a deep level of ignorance about a profession she's going into. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop now. I'll stop now because it is not my point. My point is, is that these are the fat juicy lambs out there that the predators and the scavengers are eyeing, right? Because they look at that and they think, oh, what I need to do is tell her to spend $10,000 on my coaching service so that she can learn how to make this much money. I'll tell her she can make that much money, $10,000 in the first week of publishing if she signs up for my course. And this person, and I'm sorry to be picking on this particular person, but it's so emblematic of the attitude. Who knows, this person might do it, right? Because they're like, oh, okay. You know, they think that there's an answer out there and this is how they get it. So what my actual point of all of this is, was to establish that there are these predators and scavengers out there. I received an email through my website from a, a coach who asked me for a copy of my query letter. She said that she was putting together a database of query letters for authors to use um, that would be totally free to access and that more information helps everyone. So this came right after I did the publisher's marketplace announcement of the Tor Bramble deal. So I assume that's why she looked at that and where she where she got it. Like, can you share your query letter? So for those of you who have been listening to the podcast for a while, who know anything at all about me, as clearly this chick did not, um, and I don't mean that in a misogynistic way, but I don't even know what to call her. This person. Isn't it interesting how you could say person and make it sound bad? This person, this random person who emails me and asks me for my query letter, what query letter? She clearly has no idea, right? She sees that I sold a book, so she thinks, oh, I should ask her for her query letter. And I know of other people. She's like just been blanketing, you know, contacting all these people. Well, you know, I've, I've been with my agent for years and years and years, right? So any query letter I would have written would be irrelevant at this point. And my current agent, I did not query her. I didn't even query my first agent. I queried before that, but the way that I got my first agent was because she read one of my books and asked to represent me. And then when she left the agency, I went to another agent at that agency because the head of the agency asked me to. And then when I left that agent, I went to Sarah, Sarah Younger at Nancy Yost Literary, who is awesome, but close to uh, new clients, alas. Uh, I went to her because she represented my friend, okay? And we sold this book because Sarah took it on submission and sold it for me. There's no query letter. There's none, okay? So this person, like, doesn't bother to know that much about me, may not understand enough about the business to have ferreted out that much information, which would imply that she was actually spending time doing any of this, which I think she wasn't. Um, <laughs> because then I go and look her up, right? And she has, yes, this website where she's offering coaching. Uh, this person has published one book, traditionally published a book that came out in June of 2023. And it has 58 ratings on Amazon. Okay. 58. And I'm not saying that this is bad. I mean, not everybody takes off on the first book. Most don't take off on the first book. Um, but this person is not a, is not in a position to be offering advice to anyone. Right. So now I look at her and she's got this very, very slick website where she's offering these very expensive coaching pa packages, teaching writers how to publish, um, how to get published, how to write um, with a, 
her enormous experience, I guess, uh, which she doesn't have. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be very bold that way because I feel like it has to be said. If somebody is offering coaching services in a profession where they have not yet succeeded, their advice isn't worth anything. Um, they think it is. They're, you know, if she can't make money writing, she'll make money teaching it, right? So, yeah. So here she wants to develop this database using other people's query letters that she got for free. And she dresses it up as, um, oh, you know, you're giving back to the community and it would be free to access. Maybe it would be free to access. I, I kind of believe her on that part, except everything about her website screams monetization for her benefit. She's not doing this to help the community. She's doing this to help number one herself. Uh, and I kind of wonder, living in the era of language learning models as we are, that, you know, she might have the idea that she's going to feed all of these query letters into uh, a, a language learning model, AI, I'm putting that in air quotes, and that you could then generate your own query letter from it, right? For a price, I'm sure. <clears throat> there are a lot of query letter examples online. It's really easy to Google. You don't need to hire some, ha I'm sorry, half-assed coach. This person who clearly knows nothing. She's slick though. I looked and I saw that she has like this TikTok video uh, that's very nicely done where, <laughs> and you all know, if you know anything about me, uh, why this would set me off immediately. But she um, had, you know, like writers still pantsing their novels and she's shaking her head sadly at the poor fool still pantsing their novel. No blah, blah, blah. I'm so upset I can't say it. Pantsing their novels. Um, and she, yeah, shaking her head. Oh, these poor ignorant souls. And she has these quick clips, right? I mean, it's very slickly done, nice video production and, a, and lots of views, <laughs> full of no meaning whatsoever. She shows some like standard plotting books, you know, like Save the Cat, which has been out for what, 30 years, something like that. And, and her working at her computer and yeah. And so, and then she sold her book, which has had 58 ratings on Amazon in Nearly a year. I, I, I'll be fair. I'll say nine months, right? Um, <laughs> look at these things, people. Um, I think that's I think that's my take home message. Do I have one besides the ranting? Um, like, does this person even understand what pantsing is? No, right? She has no idea because she thinks all you have to do is learn some plotting structures, and then you don't have to pants anymore. Uh, and I'm going to come back to something that one of the things that makes me really annoyed about people coming down on intuitive writers by, like myself and saying that you need to be taught, that you need to learn how to pre-plot, that all you have to do is learn, save the cat, and then you will be good at this thing. It's because they want to be able to teach you something. You can't teach people how to be intuitive writers. You, you can maybe help, but accessing that creativity, um, allowing the story to develop on its own, that isn't something that's easy to teach. But you can teach people save the cat for, you know, whatever your coaching package is. So this is a rant that has been saved up for several weeks. Um, this is what I would ask for everyone, because I see writers going online and saying, you know, like, who's a good coach? Who's a good teacher? Who can I learn craft from? And a lot of the same names pop up. And the thing is, is when you see these people doing their slick TikTok videos and positioning themselves as authorities, go and look at their what they've done right look past the testimonials on their website look past all of that stuff and see what they have actually done right if someone has a book 
that's been published for nine months and it's on Amazon and it only has 58 or 53 ratings, whatever I said, um, 58 ratings. Okay. Not a lot of people have read this book. Um, and you know, again, no harm, no foul. That's sometimes those are the breaks, but that is not a person that you want to emulate, right? That is not a person who has a lot to teach. Just be careful out there. Rem just remember there are a lot of predators and a lot of scavengers. They all want to um, eviscerate you and they don't care about you. I care. <laughs> I actually care, but that's beside the point, right? You can look and see what I've done. And I'm not making my main living from the coaching and so forth. I am making it from writing. That, and that's how I want it to be. So there's your Monday rant. Uh, I hope you all have a great week. And I will talk to you on Friday. You all take care. Bye-bye.